the next day it's under it's ready to get jacked up and get this front end torn apart i gotta get a bunch of parts ordered so i'm gonna get them ordered first and then we're gonna continue on this is gonna be a series now because they're getting way too long um we lost the battle yesterday but we're gonna win the war and we're gonna we're gonna get this up we're gonna get it apart we're gonna get those knuckles off and we're gonna do the entire front end because because it's rusty and it's a Jeep and it's New York and this is what happens when you live in a state where crap rusts and this car has been here its entire life and shit is rusty and we're gonna fix it. All right, so with the wheel off and the brakes off like I did yesterday on the other side, um, my first snafu of the day is gonna be, I gotta disconnect the steering at the, I guess you could call it a tie rod, whatever it is, but uh, the cotter pin was just completely rotted out. I went to go grab it and it just snapped. And if you look at this nut here, it is just gone. Make sure I'm on that. There's just no size socket that fits on it. So I'm gonna try maybe hammering on. I can't even get it on straight. Hammering on a socket seeing what it'll do all right that worked let me put this this horribly rusted castle nut I'll put it on upside down I don't think I'm gonna be able to huh, got it yeah I got it okay just to protect the threads there because this can quickly snowball we're not going to wind up replacing all the front end stuff. I think while I'm in here, um, I think while I'm in here, I'm going to go, I'm going to order a set of springs. I, I did put a spacer, if you remember in an early, early video on Cosmo here, I put a spacer in plus the stock isolator just to sort of level it out. Um, I don't, these springs are probably original. These shocks are, I don't know if they, I don't know. I'm just going to replace the shocks and the springs too while I'm at it. Um, this way, at least from here out, is is we know it's good. Um, the rear has got new, you know, factory replacement leaf, leaf springs on it. So, we'll see. Let's see how hard it's going to be to get this off. No, look at that. That came out okay which is good um because we didn't have to damage a, a good joint even though it's old we're gonna have to get a castle nut from somewhere i think i have a few of them laying around um so we're gonna have to add a set of coil springs and a set of shocks just factory replacement because this is just you know this is what it is here and then we'll we'll uh Try to get the rest of this off. Be a pain. Going to be a pain in the ass. So here I am off camera, thinking about my my plan of action. So I I took the castle nut off of the off of the guy here, off of the spindle knuckle, whatever you might call it. I put it back on here, and I kind of pushed this down out of the way. And if you look on the ground there. Can you see me leaking what appears to be antifreeze dripping? It looks like antifreeze, right? But then I lift this cover up and it's not antifreeze. It's leaking out of the steering stabilizer. Can you see that? Let me move the camera. Didn't I just mention Look at that. Didn't I just mention that looks like antifreeze? Look at that. I'm pulling my glove off. Hang on. I just mentioned how things can snowball. So, no, it doesn't feel like antifreeze. It feels like Earl. So, that's hydraulic oil. And that's coming out of the steering stabilizer. So we're going to add a steering stabilizer to the list. 
Holy shit. While all the hydraulic fluid leaks out of my steering stabilizer, we're gonna try to crack off these rusted cotter pins on the ball joints, and I'm just gonna see if I can blast off these two uh, castle nuts. This one's gonna have to get done with an open end wrench or a box wrench. This one I can hit with the impact. Um, we'll get those nuts off, and then we'll think about a plan of action for getting this uh, this knuckle off here. All right, so cotter pins rotted completely out. The lower was an inch and an eighth. I had to had to step up to the big giant Milwaukee to get that off. Um, otherwise, you're going to be doing a, a break a bar with a cheetah pipe probably. Uh, top one was seven eighths. Your sizes will vary though because um, if they were replaced or not, sometimes the, the the outer size of that castle nut's not always the same. So now we got this knuckle on here that's sort of just pressed up. You know, the shaft of the ball joint is tapered and seated into these two. So a little tappy tap maybe um, with a hammer, a little heat and some tappy tap might work. Um, you can put a pickle fork in there. You can use a puller. Uh, I'm just gonna see if it'll uh, if they'll just break loose with a little tapping. I get this guy out of the way a little more. With that. Now you got two of them trying to come loose at the same time. It doesn't always work either. I mean, they're not in on any any spring pressure. They're all the only in on on their own weight, so it's not like uh, there's any forces working against you or anything. I've never done this on these, so there's probably an easier way. Um, you could probably hammer the spindle d down that way on the top here, but there's no good spot to hit it. You don't want to hit here and, and have a chance of smacking this off. And I'm not using a real heavy hammer, but I am seeing a little, it looks like a little gap there. Oh, it might be moving. All right, I got a big box of pullers, a whole front end service kit it's called, but it doesn't appear that anything is really gonna do what we need it to do, especially with the hub assembly in the way, the uh, front axle's still in here because we can't get that out because we can't get the hub out. So the rusted backing plate here, I'm just gonna bend out of the way so I can hit on this knuckle with a heavier hammer in a good spot, not up here on, you know, the caliper uh, um, slide ear, whatever you want to call it. So I'm going to bend that out of the way because this is getting replaced. They are available. I checked already before I crinkled it over. And I'm going to use a little heavier hammer. I'm going to whack over here. I put the nut on the bottom over here just so it doesn't fall anywhere. Not like it will, but just in case. And I'm going to give it a couple of... I'm really just letting the weight of the hammer do it more than me swinging at it at this point right now. It's not seem to wanna... Oh, wait a minute. The top actually came loose because that stud's not turning now. That stud was turning when I was doing this. The bottom stud is still turning, so the top, the top actually came out. It gives me a little more confidence that I'm going in the right direction. All right, I'm gonna try giving it a little heat. I don't wanna damage anything, I don't wanna bend anything, so I'm gonna go with a little heat down here because that top is free. Yeah, I could feel the 
you can hear that top is free bottom stuck I'm gonna go a little heat wax first see. all right I'm gonna heat here and let's see if uh, a little heat helps like we said we're not concerned with the heat wrecking anything because everything that the heat can wreck over here is being replaced now I'm heating the knuckle where the tape and seat is to try to get it to expand a little bit You know, it, I love watching YouTube videos on how to do stuff like this. When somebody takes a Jeep that, and they just unbolt everything and it all comes apart. They're not fighting with rusted fasteners and, you know, 20 years of neglect. Now these are, you know, they're going to expand and contract at different rates between the spindle and the, the stud of the ball joint. So hopefully, it's still stuck. There we go. I don't know if the heat did anything, to be honest with you. I hit it down over here, not on the end, because that'll crack right off. All right, and that came down. Now I got a hot ball joint, so let me give it a couple seconds to cool. All right, so now the question remains, this up just to take the tension off of the nut. The question remains, are we going to have enough wiggle room to get this knuckle off with the axle still in place, which I didn't think of until about now. All right, and that answer is apparently no, because we can't can't drop it down enough so I tried cutting with this 12 volt Milwaukee and it's actually cutting through here fairly easy it's tough to get at I just expected the the shaft of the ball joint to be harder and it's hard to get at but it's not Hard hardened like I thought it would be. Remember, whatever I do here, I'm gonna have to do a second time as well. On the other side. <laughs> I can't get in there deep enough. thing about this tool is you could change direction so the sparks aren't in the face. Man, that looks really thin. Let's see if I can get it to break. Oh, it's not that thin because I still got some in the back. Now I see it better. I can see better now. All right, it's still on there. 
but that made some fast work of it. I think I could finish the rest off maybe with a sawzall. Let me try that now. All right, new blade, fresh battery. Let's see. All right. There was a little left. But I couldn't get with the grinder. I'm thinking if the sawzall was the right way to go from the beginning, um, I might try that on the other one now. If I lift this up, can I get... enough play in that bottom one and I can't and I can't so we're gonna have to cut that bottom one too so. that might be good all right so I came in with a little whizzer just to make a groove so that my sawzall blade's not bouncing all over the place. Now let's see if I can get in that groove. Nope. I cannot. So let's see if I can make a better groove. That looks like a better groove. cutting through not as fast as I thought but it's cutting through I didn't think uh, I suppose I'll believe we touch that but I guess I'm wrong I've been wrong before that lower ball joint is now cut off I had a clamp up here to hold it all together now I should be able to yeah I can okay so now that I got that off should be able to pull this off. Yep. Oh. All right, so here's my knuckle, my backing plate, and my hub. Here's the axle stub. This is actually what we wanted to replace. This is the only thing we needed to replace. Right here. Um, I can pull this out. All right. needs a U joint. Oh, now we need to get the lower and the upper out. Once we get that out, we're like we're halfway complete with the disassembly, sort of, but not really because we still got to separate the hub from the knuckle. So let's get the ball joints out. I mean, you can't even see here. Look at this. It's just so rusted. Where are we? You can't even s oh, like see that that's, it almost looks like this is part of the casting. And this is part of the ball joint. Like this is gonna be a nightmare to get out. Really, I can see it coming already. So let me put you guys over here. Where you can enjoy some of the comic relief. We'll get you on the upper ball joint right there, and we'll get set up, and then we'll we'll go to town on this one. <laughs> 